You're watching The Legal Breakdown. So Glenn, we've got some breaking news here as Donald Trump's legal issues surge back into the spotlight in the most consequential case that he faces, that's the one in DC. Talk about what just happened there. You know, Brian, at long last, we're going to see some movement in Donald Trump's criminal prosecution in Washington, DC, for trying to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election. After a long 30-day waiting period which is just part of the appellate process after an appeals court makes a decision and the Supreme Court did setting out its presidential immunity ruling after 30 days what's called the mandate issues the case is returned to the trial court for further proceedings consistent with the appellate court in this case the Supreme Court's ruling what does all that mean well I have to tell you my favorite headline that I read and I've been trying to read furiously everything that's being reported about this comes from CBS News and the headline simply states Chutkin takes the reins. Judge Chutkin now has this case back in DC federal court and I have a feeling as early as perhaps tomorrow because she is known to work on the weekends or maybe Monday she will set a schedule. A schedule for hearings to be held consistent with the Supreme Court's ruling and what that boils down to is the Supreme Court basically tried to give Donald Trump a whole bunch of immunity for a whole bunch of the crimes he committed. However, they said he may enjoy presidential immunity for official presidential acts, but if what he did on and around January 6th constituted unofficial acts, private conduct, for example, a candidate trying to retain the power of the presidency after losing an election, he can be prosecuted for unofficial acts, for private conduct, and they are now putting the ball literally back in Judge Chutkin's court to sort all this out in evidentiary hearings. So she's going to have to hold, I think, what will be pretty wide-ranging hearings on the evidence that Jack Smith collected up during the course of his investigation of Donald Trump to try to determine, consistent with the Supreme Court's ruling, What's an official act? What's an unofficial act? But here is what uh, I'm really looking forward to. When you're litigating these issues, there there will be lots of contested areas where Jack Smith will say, wait, 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 these are not official presidential acts. In fact, I think he will take that position with respect to the lion's share of what Donald Trump did to try to retain the presidency. And even if at the end of the day, there's a ruling that, well, you know what? I think some of these may be presidential acts. The good news is we're going to see the dang evidence. They're going to have to litigate the question of whether all this stuff Donald Trump did was official or unofficial. And, you know, the benefit of that is the American people are going to see and hear reported out, you know, of the trial proceedings exactly what Donald Trump did. And I have a feeling we're going to be learning some things based on the evidence Jack Smith presents that we probably didn't know before because this evidence was developed as part of a secret grand jury proceeding. All grand jury proceedings are secret by law and the public doesn't get to know about it until the prosecutor begins presenting evidence of it in court. So, you know, buckle up because in the coming weeks and probably the next couple of months, we're going to be learning a whole lot more about the crimes of Donald Trump and the many Republican witnesses who provided the incriminating evidence against Donald Trump. Right, we're basically gonna get a mini trial, so to speak here. Glenn, who is the final arbiter of whether the immunity ruling actually applies to different aspects of this case? Is that gonna be Judge Shutkin? Well, not the final arbiter, she will make the ruling Right. After. And then and then inevitably, if if Trump's team, for example, doesn't agree, then we'll see the appeals process play out. So so with that process, how does that work? While they're appealing something, do, does everything get put back on hold? Chances are yes. Anytime a case goes from a trial court judge and an issue is appealed and the appeals court accepts the issue for review, that deprives the trial court judge of jurisdiction. The trial court judge can do nothing more in the case until the appeals court resolves it. So yes, Brian, as sort of disheartening as this is, you know, this is just another step on the road of accountability for Donald Trump's crimes. 
It will probably go back up to the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals once Judge Chutkin makes her rulings, and then inevitably it will be appealed up to the Supreme Court. And, you know, we all know that the Supreme Court has do done Donald Trump so many solids, so many favors that, you know, I'm not entirely optimistic that when Judge Chutkin makes her rulings, and if those rulings are affirmed by the D.C. Federal Circuit Court of Appeals, that the Supreme Court will go along with it. But you know what? Listen, better we get this stuff out in front of the American people now so, you know, they don't go to the polls completely uninformed about right. exactly what Donald Trump did to try to criminally retain the power of the presidency. Just to dig in for a quick moment on the issue of appeals, will we have to wait for that process to begin until all of the issues that were raised by Jack Smith or Trump's team are finally raised? So we'll get to litigate every issue and then whichever issues both sides have 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 problems with, then they can appeal after. But we'll still get all of those issues you know, into the spotlight, at least until they're appealed. Yeah, that's a great question. I think the answer is yes. I think Judge Chutkin will not begin to allow piecemeal appeals. Okay. I think what she will do is say, listen, we are going to resolve the entire legal landscape now. Let's get it all on the record. Let's figure out what I believe is official conduct, what is unofficial or private conduct. Let's get these rulings, you know, uh, set. And then if they have to run back up the appellate chain, let's do it. But let's do it all at the same time. That's how I believe this matter will progress. Which is not to say that Donald Trump won't try to just whatever the very first issue there is, try to gum up the works by appealing that immediately and trying to prevent anything else from moving forward so that we don't engage in the very mini trial that you were just alluding to at the top of this video. Um, would that be possible? Is he going to be able to have his team appeal after the very first little piece of evidence that he doesn't agree with? Possible, but not likely he will win because what will happen is if he tries to do a piecemeal appeal of just Judge Chuckin's first ruling, for example, um, I think the D.C. Federal Circuit Court of Appeals will be on to Donald Trump's game of delay and they will say, no, we're not accepting this. And we are not directing that the trial court, Judge Chutkin, stay or pause her hearings. We are directing them to continue. And, and Trump, you're out of luck. I suspect that is where the appeals court will land if Donald Trump tries to play his game of delay. Okay, and of course, they could always appeal further to the U.S. Supreme Court, correct? They could, but I, I even think the Supreme Court will want to take all of the rulings sort of at one time so they can survey all the legal landscape and then reach their own conclusions about whether Judge Chutkin was right with respect to what she ruled was official conduct versus unofficial conduct. OK, and now finally, let's finish off with this. How privy will the American people be to what's happening in the courtroom? What kind of insight or access will we have? Uh, I'm assuming this isn't going to be televised to any degree, but what's it what's it going to look like on our end? So I will be covering the trials. I'll be in the courtroom. So the way it works is um, when these high profile cases are handled in the courts of Washington, D.C., that was my home for a couple of decades. Um, there is the, the courtroom proper. That's where Donald Trump will be sitting and Judge Chutkin will be sitting. The audience will be full. I'll be in that courtroom much of the time. There are also what are called overflow courtrooms. There's a closed circuit broadcast to those overflow courtrooms in the courthouse in D.C. So the public can come and sit and watch it in real time. Then there's a media room where the media and I have access to that room as well in my as in my capacity as a legal analyst for MSNBC. And from that room, unlike the courtroom and the overflow courtrooms, you can send stuff out in real time. And that's where we have some tremendous sort of journalists and reporters and even bloggers who are very good about, you know, posting, sending out every word, every sentence, every bit of the court proceeding in what is very close to real time. I'm I'm talking literally like a five second delay. So yes, this stuff's gonna get out into the public square in a in a reliable fashion, not just Donald Trump's flunkies and lap dogs and sycophants stepping right. to the cameras at the end of the day and saying, oh my God, everything blew up and Jack Smith performed horribly in court. No, we're gonna get the real deal regarding the information as it unfolds in court. And one final thing that piqued my interest here, you said that Donald Trump will be in the courtroom. Is he obligated to be in the courtroom every day the proceedings occur? 
The answer is yes, unless the court gives him permission to miss one or more sessions. So here's the thing. Um, in a criminal case, uh, even in these sort of pre-trial hearings, bef long before a jury is ever in the box, defendants not only have a right to be in court, but they have an obligation to be in court. Why? Because if they're not in court and something goes sideways, what are they going to do? Well, in the event of conviction, they're going to say, wait a minute, I wasn't present in court and I didn't have an opportunity to consult with my counsel and make sure he or she was making the uh, the best decisions that were in my interest. So almost always judges require and defendants are allowed to be present in every court session, every minute of every day. The exception to that is if the defendant makes a request to be absent from one or more sessions and the judge grants that request. I, for one, hope Donald Trump doesn't make that request. But if he does, I hope Judge Chutkin doesn't grant it because, you know, if he's not there, you know, he will undoubtedly be heard to complain about what went on in his absence. But it all remains to be seen. OK, well, for those watching right now to stay on top of this whole prog process as it plays out. And again, we will have Glenn inside of the courtroom. So we'll have you know no better person to be able to get this information from. Please make sure to subscribe. The links to both of our channels are right here on the screen. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen. And I'm Glenn Kirshner. You're watching The Legal Breakdown.